Hello everybody, this is Pun the Frugal Streamer and I want to talk about improving your microphone sound. And this is for, primarily for just voice commentary for your vocal, for your live stream. Not really to add any crazy effects or anything, but just how to have a nice clean sound for your microphone. So we're going to do that by using some plugins and I'm going to show you how I do it personally and how I personally think about EQing and using compression and noise gain. So let's go ahead and get into the video. But before we do, make sure you check me out on my socials, twitch.tv forward slash the frugal streamer YT. You can hit me up on Twitter and follow there at frugal underscore streamer. And you can also hit me up on Facebook where I do stream occasionally and post videos. And then Discord. Discord's important because that is a great way for you to interact with me, with the community. And if you have any issues, you want to share your live stream, you want to share videos or you just want to talk about streaming then that is where you do it and uh, you can get in touch with me there i do have a support quest channel there if you're having issues and you want to reach out to me for help it's a great way to do it links are in the description below now let's get in the video okay so let's go ahead and we'll get into this but i want to show you first of all what i'm using and how you can get the software that I'm using. Okay, so first of all, let's go over to the game PC here. This is Voice Meter Potato. So Voice Meter Potato is a virtual mixer that you can use to distribute your audio to wherever you want it to go, including over your network to another PC using VBAN. So there is my little commercial for this. Um, I have been using Voice Meter for a long time and it's really a cool program. But here is my microphone channel. I am using an audio interface, uh, XLR is a Behringer Euphoria UMC22, I believe, yep. Anyway, and it is plugged up via USB into my PC, and that is how the microphone sound is getting here. But what I have done is I'm also using a VST host. Now, VST host uh, allows you to insert plugins and use these VST plugins to you know, clean up your microphone, do you know, add effects and all kinds of stuff like that. And you can do this for MIDI devices, you can do it for instruments, all kinds of stuff. Here I'm using it for my microphone. Now this is Contably Light. All right, so two programs, and I'll provide links in the description, but uh, you can get voice meter at VB Audio's website. And you can go to their web shop where you can uh, purchase voice meter potato and i recommend you do this okay that they, they recommend it's 35 dollars, okay but it's donate wear all right so i'm a fan you could pay 10 pounds and you know get it now you can download this and try it for free um but it will have some limitations in time and how long it takes to actually start up because it's a you know you're trying it out but if it works well for you then go ahead and pay the 10 pounds or ten dollars and you know get it the second one is you can go and do a google search for reaper vst plugins and it will send you to the replugs website at reaper.fm and this is where you will download these plugins and you can see this is what all the plugins are that you get it with which is awesome you can download them right here again i will provide the links in the description um, i recommend most people i mean most people now have a 64-bit uh windows i recommend you using the 64-bit plugins okay but both 32-bit and 64-bit are here all right same goes for potato by the way as it comes in both versions i recommend most people use a 64-bit if they can support it all right, let's post pun here. Figuring out while I was making the video that I forgot a piece. So I wanted to show you Contably real quick. So Contably is the third piece of software that we will use to improve our microphone sound. We'll use this connect with voice meter so that we can use the VST plugins uh, that we just talked about, the Reaper plugins. Uh, this is a free program. You can download Contably. You get all three versions with the download and then depending on which registration you go with will determine what uh, version you're going to use. Now I'm using Contably Lite, that's the free version when you register for it. 
Uh, you can get a key for Contably Light, which you will then put into the software, and it will then be open, and you can use it you know, unlimited. So it's really good. So this comes in 32-bit and 64-bit. All right, so again, I recommend you know using 64-bit uh, for all your programs if you're using Windows 10. Uh, because, you know, most people should be using that by now. And don't try to mix them up. If you're using 32-bit software somewhere else, uh, don't try to use 64-bit here or whatever because you're, you're just going to ask for problems. So anyway, so Contably is good. I, I really like this program a lot. Um, it's really the latest version is really easy to use, which you will see here in a minute. This is what Contably Lite looks like. And this is what voice meter looks like. So the first thing you're going to want to do to set this up, and this is how I have mine set up, is if you go to the menu and you go into system settings, you have these inserts at the bottom here, these patch inserts. Now I'm using channel five for my microphone, so I'm going to enable both of these by simply left-clicking on them and highlighting them, okay? Once you do that, then... In Contably, when you start this up initially, you're going to, it's going to have a wizard that's going to ask you these things that I'm getting ready to show you. Now, when I when I go into tool and options, it's going to disable these plugins. So you're actually going to hear my raw microphone sound. The audio might drop a little bit. Okay, so you might need to, I'll fix this in post so this, you know, that, so that this actually doesn't affect you having to go and change your volume. But just give you an, uh, an idea of what's going to happen is you're going to hear my audio change with my mic when I do this. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to your audio engine, and they'll ask you this in the wizard too. You're going to want to use the ASIO, Voice Meter Potato Insert Virtual ASIO or ASIO, as your audio device, okay? So that's, the, you have to use an ASIO device when you're inputting any audio or signal into Contably, okay? If you're do, doing a playback, then you can use the Wasapis. Okay, but anyway, so AS, ASIO, voice meter potato, virtual input, okay? You can set your bit rate, sample rate, buffer size. Buffer size will change automatically depending on what you select for your ASIO device, but uh, anyway. We have that. Then the next thing you're going to want to do is you want to con tell Contably exactly where you want to go in voice meter. So here you have main microphone, you have main speakers. So main microphone, if you click on the left, um, you can edit and then tell that this is, and this is a list of all the inserts again from that we just uh, enabled in voice meter. And you want to use the ones that you turned on. So, and this is N5 left and right. So that's what I have selected here. Uh, you can see N5 left and right. And then you want to also use those inserts to bring the Contably audio back into voice mirror, into that channel, prefade channel. And that is how I've done it here again. You can edit that. Okay, pretty easy to do and show, you know, choose whichever one you want. So if your microphone is in channel one in voice meter, then you want to choose these inserts, okay? And you want to make sure they're turned on in voice meter. All right, so now I'll get out of this and you actually hear the plugins kick back in. Oh, really quick, I forgot to show you. So plugin options, you're going to need to tell Contably where you want it to look for your VST plugins, okay? So this is where I have stored these. This is the generic, the default, when you install Reaper FM, there is, that's where it's going to install at uh, by default. If you just click through everything and next, next, next without changing it, all right? And then of course, it'll rescan every time you start, to start it up. So if you add new plugins and you've installed them into this folder, it'll rescan and the new ones will show up in here too, which is really nice, okay? so. Now, here you have uh, all these little plus signs, and I like the way that Contably Lite, the newest version, has done this. It's more like a node uh, mode here where you can visually see the chain of effects and how they route, which is cool. Uh, so anyway, I have two effects here. I have an EQ and I have a compressor. Let's add a noise gate just to show you how to install a plugin. So I'm going to add a plugin. I'm going to find the regate, which is a noise gate. So I'm going to hit okay. 
And you see that I can move this around and it's connected output to my main speakers. But this is not going to work because I want it to be part of this effects chain. So if you highlight this little arrow and then you click this, you can move it around. So I want to bring this into the stereo of the EQ. And then I want to click this one and bring this one into the stereo input of the rig gate. And then you can move it and there you go. So now my microphone is coming into this gate then the EQ and then the compressor. You can edit this by right clicking and selecting plugin editor. And this is a noise gate. Uh, so if you're just streaming, and I, most people should use a noise gate. It's a great way to keep out any offending noise when you're not actually speaking. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to allow this to settle down so you can see where the background noise is set. All right, so that is right above background noise. So now this gate is going to, and you should if you're, if you're, uh, you know, you have good headphones on, you should be able to hear my background noise go away as soon as I quit talking. Once that green goes below that threshold there. So there are some things that you can do for adjusting your gate so that it is set properly. Now, and you might want to also say, uh, try like clicking your keyboard if you don't want your keyboard clicks to be in your audio when you're not talking. So I will do that now and you can watch, you'll see the green hop up and down as I'm clicking on my space bar. And I'll move this up to keep that from uh, being triggered. So you shouldn't have heard anything because there was no audio here on the meter coming out when I've adjusted that. Okay, the problem is, is if you get this too high and you're uh, far away enough from your microphone, is you can cut off the front end of your words. So there are some things that we can do to fix that. Uh, so we can set a pre-open. First, first of all, let's talk about these envelopes. You got a pre-open, you have attack, you have hold. The main ones that we're really worried about is attack, hold, and the release. Uh, so attack is how quickly the gate will open once you go beyond this threshold that you've set. In my case, it's set to minus 41.6. So a quick attack is generally good um, anywhere from three to say 20 milliseconds, um, you know, a lot of people say they want it just as quickly as possible, which is fine. So I'll leave that at three. The release is when you want the gate to close once the threshold goes below what you have set. So anytime the sound goes below minus 41.6, it's going to take 100 milliseconds for this to close. All right, so that is the primary setting to hold. Um, you can set the hold. Generally speaking, rule of thumb is you want it to be half of what your release is. So anywhere from 40 to 50 milliseconds is generally good. Uh, also, you can use a pre-open, and this will actually help a little bit with cutting off, with avoiding cutting off the front end of your words. So they generally say to kind of set it about double of what your attack is. Okay, so this pre-open will kind of I guess since when it's about to reach that and then it will pre-open for six seconds and that will kind of help with, you know, you cutting your words off. So now I should not be able to hear any mouse clicks. I should not be able to hear any, um, you know, hear any uh, keyboard clicks, that sort of thing. And it will cut off the general background noise of the room space that I'm in. Even there, that was, I just did a really hard mouse click like if I was playing a game and you, did, you shouldn't have heard that. So that's cool. So that is what gate is for, and this is a great thing to do for your live stream, and generally speaking, for your microphone anyway. Now, there is instances where I do not want to use noise gate, and I will talk about that here uh, at the end of the video. Uh, one other thing that you can also use this for is you can also set a high-pass filter. So if you don't want any low-end frequency noise, and generally for a vocal, anything below 70 hertz is where you're really aiming for. You don't want anything below that to really get into your vocal because it'll muddy the sound up, you can set a high pass filter here. And simply by going in and setting this up for right, right around 70 hertz will be good or maybe 80 hertz. Uh, it's personal preference. Listen to your vocal, play with it. You can also do this in EQ, which we'll show here later. So I'm going to drop this down. Now, the last thing here is you have a wet and dry mix. 
So the wet is where your the the actual effect of, you know your signal with full effect is. Um, here it's turned all the way up or nearly all the way it's at zero, and then you have the dry, which is your raw microphone or raw input coming into the effect. Uh, a lot of people recommend uh, you know voiceover artists and stuff recommend that you actually have a little bit of your dry in this. Again, it'll kind of help a little bit with any. Uh, you know, your your front end of your, you know, words getting cut off by the noise gate. But let's bring that up, you know, about minus 25 or something like that. So anyway. And also, it'll, it, it'll add a little bit of warmth, too, because, you know, you do want a little bit of warmth cut in. And, and uh, so this is uh, just an option. You don't have to do it again. Listen to your mic and see what you think. All right. So that is the gate. Uh, that we will use. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is EQ, and EQ is very important. Okay, so I have added this re-EQ into the chain here. Again, right-click, plug-in editor to get the UI, and let me talk about what I've done here. So this is a great parametric EQ. I like it because you get a visual of the sound of your microphone, and you get a representation of where the different frequency peaks and valleys are. So here you can see that the number, the first peak here is around the 130, 140 hertz. Uh, so that is where the, my fundamental voice frequency is. And it'll vary depending on how I change the pitch in my voice. It'll go up or if I change it and it'll go down and it'll, you know. So there is a band of frequency there where you kind of want to think about when you're doing equalization. Uh, so the first thing, the first band that I have here, I'm actually doing a high pass. We just talked about that. Okay, this is set at about uh, 56 hertz. I've listened to my voice, and I like just a little bit of bass tone coming in. And with the way this rolls off is it does cut off some of the boominess that I don't really want in there, but it keeps the warmth of my fundamental frequency. And so that is where I have set this at 56 Hertz. Again, you need to listen to yours and figure out where you want to adjust it. Now I'll disable this band and you can kind of hear where there's just a little bit of more low end rumble. You really need headphones to listen to this, but uh, to, you know, really hear this, but there is just a subtle difference between me disabling this band and enabling this band. Um, and then again, any transient noises that you can't control, like if you're near a street and you have vehicles coming by, that low end noise will come through your your house or your apartment, your flat, and will cause a low end kind of rumble noise that is subtle, but it's just something you don't want in your mix. So that you can use this high pass to cut that out or low shelf. They both kind of perform the same thing. Um, you know, you have a little bit more of an adjustment with uh, low shelf. But for here, I'm just using a high pass and uh, to do that. So band two, three, and any other bands that you may want to add, I'd have forward this, uh, you know, using as a semblance, and we'll talk about it in a second. But you can add multiple bands of this. Uh, for a voiceover vocal or for normal commentary, I don't really think you need a whole bunch here. Um, and I will talk about what I'm doing here with band two and three. So band two and three are really there to cut out any box in this. And what we're listening for is you're listening for this kind of echoey kind of sound. And you want to cut the major ones out to kind of clean up your vocal a little bit. Now, that's what I've done with bands two and three. So how do you figure it out? Well, let's take band five here. Band five is disabled. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a frequency, and 1,000 hertz is generally uh, a rough spot for a lot of male vocals. For me, it's not quite as bad. But anyway, let's just choose 1,000 hertz. What we'll do is we're going to boost the gain up way high, so like 10 dB, maybe 12 dB. And then what we'll do, let's enable this. Okay. And we're, what we'll do is we'll narrow this bandwidth. Now you can hear the vocal. You should be able to hear the vocal and see that there, you know, there's this kind of echoey sound there. So what you would do is to get rid of that or to help clean it up is to just bring this down a couple dB, like three, maybe four dB at the most. You don't need a whole lot. 
And you might want to, depending on how much of this energy is uh, being shown here, you might want to widen the bandwidth a little bit, or the Q is another, or octave. And there's all kinds of different bandwidth, octave, and Q are primarily the three things that you'll see inside of EQs. They all mean the same thing. And you can then uh, help to clean your vocal up. And you, you might have, you know, maybe two or three bands of this where you really want to clean that up. And that's what I have done here. Okay. So let me disable channel five, as it's not such a big deal for me. Uh, but that's a way to clean up and use EQ, which is primarily used to cut uh, affected frequencies that really just make your vocal sound really boomy or echoey. Uh, or we're cutting out semblance, which is what band five is used for. So band five, or band four, I'm sorry. Band four is set at 5,050 hertz for me. So if I say like salt or sand or, uh, you know, seashell or something, you can see where those pop up here right around 5,000 hertz. So S's can be, or semblance can be, be harsh, especially for me, because I, I'm real, I pronounce them really harshly. I'm loud with it. Um, you can use EQ to reduce that noise, and it's like a de -esser. And you can use EQ to reduce the harshness of your S sounds or any you know other semblance like that. So that's what band four is for. Uh, you need to kind of say those words. Like you could say like sand, or you could do like that, and you can see where the sound pops up there. And you could play with this frequency and then adjust the gain down, you know, like here. Again, I've got it minus 2, minus 3 dB. I've got this bandwidth here that kind of, you know, is opened up enough to cover that frequency spectrum for where those words would appear or those sounds would appear. All right. And generally speaking, for just cleaning up your vocal, this is generally what you would do for an EQ. Um, you might also, if you want to, um, you could add a band here and do a low pad. And you could bring the frequency up to say, you know, about 10,000, 12,000 hertz, and then uh, adjust this so that you can cut off any like hiss or something that may be in the upper frequency band that would again introduce noise you don't want in your vocal. Um, so there are options there. Some people do this, some people just leave it open. Um, and some people could also use a something like a high shelf, okay, to actually bring in a little bit more brightness in your vocal. So you could actually increase the gain here and, you know, add a little bit of brightness. Um, and you can adjust the frequency down, and you can see how it affects the vocal. So, and actually do this inside of OBS. But for doing a record commentary, regular commentary, um, I tend to just like to leave this, and if I want to add anything, I can do it in post in my audio software, like uh, auditions, what I use. All right, so that is equalization in a nutshell, using the re-EQ. Now, let's talk about compression. Now, everybody should use compression. It's very important because you're not going to be able to keep the same volume inside of your microphone at all times. If you notice for me, I'm constantly turning my head, that changes the level that goes into your microphone. And as a result, you'll see that your audio always changes levels of volume. Well, compressor is used to kind of equalize that and to bring the low stuff up some and to bring the stuff that gets really loud down so that you're not killing the viewers and viewers don't have to constantly adjust volume. So that's what your compressor does. Again, right click on the compressor to get the uh, UI here, and then you can kind of see my settings. And you can see the compression that I'm using. So right now I have a compression. I'm attack again. I want a quick attack for my vocal, so I'm using three milliseconds. Again, the release is 100 milliseconds. That's its default. I'm using a ratio here, this ratio of compression. So basically for every 3 dB above the threshold that I have set, which is minus 37.8, it is compressing it by 1 dB. So for every 3 dB above, you get 1 dB of compression. All right. Uh, knee size, depending on what you're using, uh, you know, you might want to change this, but for a vocal, the default of zero is fine. Uh, again, you have low-pass and high-pass filters you can take advantage of if you want to use that. 
But remember, you need to kind of see where you're primarily talking, okay, where your uh, main volume is. And then that's what's going to determine where you want to set this. You don't want to set this way down here because you're basically compressing everything, and that's ridiculous. Uh, you only want to compress the stuff that gets really high, and you want to kind of use makeup gain, which I you see here is auto makeup is checked. That is a gain setting, and it, this will do auto makeup gain for you. And here you can just set the threshold that you want to set. And generally speaking, this is about where I want mine at because – you don't want a ton of compression. It does affect the sound of your voice. Uh, so this is a nice setting. So if I get really loud, um, it's generally compressing by about 6 dB. But if I'm talking normally, you only see it hitting here at about minus maybe 1 or 2 dB at the most. Okay. Now I'm doing a full wet mix here because I want the full effect. I'm not adding any dry here. And then, of course, I'm using this auto makeup gain. Let me uncheck this, and you can kind of see what what how this affects because if you don't use auto makeup gain, the only thing the compressor do, is doing is lowering the volume of any peaks that you may have. It's not actually bringing up any of the low end. So you can kind of hear the difference uh, with the compression is it actually does bring the volume of your microphone down. So I definitely recommend you use auto makeup gain because then your viewers will be able to set a volume and they won't have to change it. So it's nice. It helps them out a lot. So that is the three main things uh, for this uh, VST plug-in chain that I have built using my microphone. Uh, again, outputting to the main speakers, which does come back into this channel here, where I can then you know have the main volume for the mixer set and then outputting where I want it to go, which is this B2 output, which happens to be what I have set for my default record device for Windows, which then Windows you know, uses to send to all other programs like Discord or any games I play for my microphone. And that is how I have my effects set up. Now, there are a couple options here um, in Voice Meter. If you use Voice Meter, Voice Meter has a built-in lead, or, or let me, I don't know if Banana does, but I know Potato does, has a built-in limiter for each of your prefade channels. Left-click right here and pull this down, and you can set a limiter so that if you have any transient sounds, that goes where it hits this little yellow line on your meter here, um, it will cut off. I mean, it's a hard limiter. It will cut that off and it won't hurt your viewer's ears. Um, and this can happen occasionally if you say you accidentally hit your cable and you disconnect your microphone, it can send a transient signal, which will really clip and peak and will be very nasty, especially for digital signals. So you can set a limiter there. Um, you can also set a limiter in OBS. Uh, OBS has a limiter that you can use, a built-in filter that works great. Um, so there's an option there. All right, so say you don't have voice meter. Say you don't want, you know, you don't want to use Contably. Well, let's look at OBS. All right, and here is OBS. And here is my microphone aux down here. This is the channel that my microphone comes in. If you click on the gear here, and then left click on filters, you will open up the filter options. Here I have a couple different uh, plugins set. Okay, this is the limiter I was talking about. This is just a built in filter. It's not a plugin uh, that you can download, it's just built right into OBS. And I have this set to minus 0.1 dB. EQ, though, I'm using the real, the Reaper plugin, the Reaper EQ plugin. Uh, simply by going and hitting the plus symbol, OBS can host VST plugins. So you, you just hit, hit this, name it whatever you want. Let's just call this compressor. And then you can select the read compressor, which is what we just looked at. Okay, so here is the compressor. Uh, this is the default settings. You can adjust this like we had it before. You can bring the threshold down. And you can see the compression starting to happen uh, in all this stuff. Now, I've already done this in voice meter, so I would not personally do this. But you can set up the same effects chain that I just showed you in Contably Light right here inside of OBS. And that will affect your broadcast signal going out to your uh, viewers on your stream. It will not affect your raw microphone sound. So any other program that may be using your microphone will not have these effects. That's why I like doing it inside of voice meter because it affects everything. 
and everybody hears the same microphone sound. All right, that is my primary way of cleaning up my microphone for my vocal. Uh, voice meter itself has a built-in a built-in um, EQ, which I can show you how to use real quick. There is some disadvantages to it that I do not like, but here you have an EQ that you, if you left click on it and turn it blue, that means the EQ is now active, and you can right click on it to bring up the UI. What I don't like about this is that you do not have a visual representation of your actual raw microphone signal. So you do cannot really see where you might need to focus on. But you can still listen and monitor your microphone. You would, In my case here, I would need to turn on A1. And then what I would do is I would actually EQ A1 because I'm actually monitoring it. And once I'm done and I've, you know, I've peaked my frequencies up and I'm, you know, moving it around and listening to my areas that I need to work on, I would then copy this and then go here and then paste it. And let me uh, flatten this out just to show you. And if I paste it, I would then bring in the EQ settings from that other micro, that other channel that I was just monitoring. I generally don't use this again. Like I said, I, I prefer using the plugin because I like being able to see my microphone audio and figure out where I need to work. But that is an option if you're a voice meter user. Other than that, use the plugin in OBS and you would, you know, then be able to clean up your, um, you know, your stream audio. Now, I talked about noise gate and why I don't necessarily want to use it all the time. Why I don't necessarily use a gate inside of voice meters is because there is times where I don't want to have my background noise cut out. Because, unfortunately, with a gate, even when you're speaking, it's going to pick up your background, space noise, everything going around you. And so when I'm doing a commentary video... I do want to pick up the background noise so that when I go into my audio software that I use to edit my audio in post, which is uh, for me, Adobe Audition, I can take a sample of that background noise and then use noise reduction to cut that out of the whole audio track. So I usually, when I record a video, I pause for about five seconds. I get a sample of the background noise. That way it gets a Audition gets a nice clean sample that it can then cut out of the rest of the audio track. If I had noise gate set, then I wouldn't be able to get a nice clean uh, background recording. But that's really using uh, using the effects to clean up your microphone sound. That's generally what most people should really be doing. Um, now, there are other factors that go into it, and the main, uh, I think, most important factors our proper gain and proximity of your microphone to your mouth, because that's really where you're going to make the most out of your microphone sound. So real quickly, um, I try to set a gain so that my microphone signal is around uh, with the effects, you know, and the auto gain and all that for compressor is so that my signal is around minus 15 dB on the meters. You can see here in OBS, that's where it's at is minus 15 um, you know, if you have a DAO or anything that has a meter, um, it'll also register there. But that's generally speaking where I try to target this. Um, right now, I have a gain booster right here that provides 26 dB of clean signal. So my gain right now on my audio interface is actually like at maybe 10 o'clock position, which is probably close to uh, 35, maybe 40 percent uh, gain um, because of this gain booster. If I did not have this gain booster, I would have to have my gain turned up to almost 75, 80%, which introduces preamp noise and stuff like that, which you really don't want to deal with. So the proper gain setting is important because you don't want your SNR, your signal to noise ratio, to be really low. A one to one signal to noise ratio is terrible. You want something like 20 to one or 30 to one. There's really no way to uh, figure that out unless you actually take measurements of your, your, uh, your gain compared to your noise floor. But in theory, what you want to do is you want to have a really big ratio between your signal and your noise because then you're you're going to be able to clean up the noise if you had a like a one or one to one or two to one kind of ratio where you had your gain really low and um your noise level was is basically equal to your voice 
you're it's going to be you're going to have a terrible time getting rid of your uh, background noise. So good gain. You don't want a lot of gain that would start introducing preamp noise, um, but you want enough so that you can get a nice audio level, you know, minus 15 or so, minus 12 dB. Then if you're wanting to do a commentary in post-processing in an audio software, you can then add gain, you can normalize, you can do all that stuff that will bring up the overall volume. Um, so anyway, another way to help get rid of the background noise and increase SNR without increasing gain is to bring the microphone closer to you. That's why I have this microphone boom or a scissor stand, depending on what you want to call it, um, so that I can bring my microphone as close to me. Now, right now, I let's say I'm actually about that far away. So that's, you know, about a fist away from the microphone is about where I'm at. It's only a couple inches. Uh, this is a dynamic microphone. It requires me to be uh, close enough to it so that I can get proper uh, sound level into it. And um, it gives you a nice, you know, proximity effect. You get a full range of sound. Uh, the further away I get from it, uh, and, you know, you could tell that the dynamics change, that some of the frequency drops off. Uh, so you really want for a dynamic microphone to be close. Well, any microphone, really, you want to be close. Um, condensers are powered, 48-volt uh, phantom power. Uh, so there you have a little bit more play. They're a lot more sensitive. Um, you could you know, be not as close, but you still want them close because you want to reject background noise, other things that you don't want in your signal. So uh, anyway, that is a general rule of thumb. Proximity, close to your uh, mouth so that it can get the full uh, range of signal from your voice and proper gain. And then you go into your effects and you set up your uh, gate, your compressor, your equalization and what if you're a singer, you might want to add reverb, some delay in there. Uh, but for general vocals, for your live stream, like what we're doing now, those three effects that I've shown you and all the ways that, uh, that I've shown you how to, to implement them is what you want to do to improve your microphone sound. Anyway, I hope this video helped you out. And if it did, make sure you hit the like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications so that you'll know when I have another video that goes live. But other than that, uh, hit me up on my socials. Again, the link is down in the description below. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Hope you have a great weekend. Be safe out there, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.